Welcome to my Cisco review of Scaling Networks. This should be the third installment of our CCNA program. So we're doing chapter th uh, three, link aggregation, or LAC. All right, so we're gonna talk about what some LAC concepts are, how to do its configuration, and end with a summary. This chapter is extremely small, so that's kind of interesting. So our main objective is, again, to understand what it is, how it works. We're going to talk about ether channel. Uh, ether channel is one form of link aggregation and kind of why we do it. So let's get on to our concepts. Link aggregation allows us to create a logical link made up of several physical links. So, so what does that mean? Basically, if we have two ports, four ports, eight ports, on a server and we need additional bandwidth, we can logically group them together, bond them together so that they work together. On the switch side, they will see that as a logical single connection. And it's always denoted with the circle around them. That means logically that's one link, even though physically that's two links. Common question is, why do we do this? Well, we can actually have one gigabit link, for example, or we could do uh, two bonded links together, and now we have one two gigabit link. If we add in a third link or a fourth link, it just grows. So some of its advantages are, again, it allows us to increase bandwidth without having to have any more fancy switch ports. So it will rely on the existing switch ports. It will load balance between them. Aggregation uh, is one way to also allow for STP. So because again, it's gonna create a single logical link. And in a way it provides us redundancy. Okay, so ether channel is implemented by grouping multiple physical ports of the same type. It needs to provide a full duplex. You can do groups of eight. So here we have fast ethernet. You could do a fast ether channel. So that'd be eight 100 megabit connections, or you can do eight gigabit channels or eight giga ether channels. So that's gonna be eight gigabit links. Ether channel can consist up to 16 compatible channels, but that's where it gets really weird. I've seen documentation showing 16, but a total bandwidth of eight. If we're grouping 16 and it's full duplex, that means we should have a maximum of 16 gigs or 1600 megabits. Well, here we're showing 800 as the limit and eight gigs as the limit. So gotta be careful with that. One thing that this is super important that you realize is that the Cisco IOS, uh, depending on the version that you have, may limit how many ether channels you can have. In this example, a modern day IOS is limiting it to six ether channels. So here we have one ether channel this is called the port aggregation protocol. And basically for this, we have three modes on desirable auto. And if we have switches configured with these different modes, we get, if they get established or not, you guys can go through this chart. If link aggregation is turned on on both, then the channel is created. If one's set to auto desirable and one's just set to, to desirable, the port will be created. If one is set to auto, on or desirable, and the second side is not configured, no establishment, on desired, no establishment, or if they're both set to auto or one set to on, no establishment. So again, PAGP is just one type. LAC is another one, link aggregation control pro uh, protocol. This is a open standard, non-proprietary so you'll see this one most common on all the different brand switches again very similar on and on will be yes 
active and passive and the other side active, channel will be uh, created. If it's on active or passive and the other side is not configured, no link establishment. If one's on and one's active, no. If one's passive or on and the other side is passive, then no. So let's get to how do we configure it? Like, how is what are some of the issues that we may run into when configuring it? Here's an important thing. First of all, the switches must support either channel. Second, speed and duplex must match. Is it full duplex? Is it half duplex? It doesn't matter as long as it's the same on both sides. Second, VLANs. You have to match them on both sides. Next, the range of VLANs. Same range on all of the interfaces. How do we configure it? We do this. We have to do two steps here. First, we have to create the Ether channel. So interface range, here we're doing fast Ethernet 0, 1 through 2. And you're going to create a channel group. So channel hyphen group, name the group mode. Is it going to be active? Is it going to be passive? Is it going to be what? Once we create the channel group, then we can actually use it as a interface. So interface port channel, not port group, but port channel one, and then you can do all of your configurations there. In this example, we're looking at how to make them a trunk port. So we'll treat uh, again the port channel like a regular interface, and we issue our switch port trunk command. How do we verify? Here are the appropriate show commands, show interface port channel, show ether channel summary, show ether channel port channel, show interface ether channel. And again, you guys can go through what each one does. You don't need me to read that screen. Troubleshooting. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Your show commands are going to be your friend. Are they running? Are they not running? Are they in the appropriate on mode, off mode, desirable mode? Is the link created? That's actually the end of this chapter. This chapter is extremely short. I'd like to thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know.